Hey guys, welcome to the importance of Pscale. Uh, this is a little video I want to do um, about Pscale in, in Houdini, what it is, why do we care, and uh, let me show you a couple of things I got set up. So first off, uh, I've just got a quick grid here with a mountain, just to make it look cool. Uh, a sphere uh, with a scale of one and a copy to points. So now this copy of copy to points is going to copy this sphere onto each point. Now, if you want to scale it down, you can either scale it like this uniformly, uh, or you can drop down the transform and do uh, uniform transforms like this and scale it like that, or scale it in X or whatever. But uh, if you want to do individual scaling for each point, uh, you need to do something a little bit more complex, and that is where P scale comes in. So P scale essentially is a radius value for each point. So let's drop down a quick wrangle. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this P scale, and I'm going to display this copy to points so you can see exactly what's going to happen. So here we make a float function called P scale, and we can set it. If we set it to one, nothing's going to happen, okay? Because one is exactly what its default is. Uh, let's say we set it to 0 0.1. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. Now we've got a P scale uh, attribute set to 0 0.1. Great, but I mean, we could have done that over here, so who cares, right? So actually, let's try and do a random uh, p-scale. So I'm going to write a rand function based on oh, ptnum. So there uh, you've got your random function for each point, so it's going to give us a random value from 0 to 1 uh, based on the, using the point number as a, as a seed. So let's have a look here. So here we go from 1 well, almost one to almost zero. Okay, great stuff. Now, uh, another function of pscale is that you can use it as a radius value for collisions. So say for example, I've got this torus here set up and it's just um, going to source particles from that torus, just like that, and collide with this ground plane and got gravity on it and nothing strange yeah all the offsets are pretty much default what I'll do actually is I will copy this sphere of 1 actually let's make this a little bit less sphere of 0 0.1 and run it until I hit something okay cool so we've hit something lovely now let's zoom in a bit and you can see that this let's actually bump this up to two you can see that this is now going through the ground plane that is because the particles that are getting seeded are not do not have a radius and therefore they're going to collide at their normal point you can see here this will collide based on its position its actual point in space so it doesn't have a radius doesn't have any collisions well it has collisions but nothing um, nothing bigger than itself, which is 0 0.00001 whatever. How do we change this? Well, we can either do uh, a rigid body sim and we can seed these these spheres in and run that. But well, say we've got a million points, what are we going to do? Uh, what we can do is we can add a random attribute, well, an attribute called p scale. And we add one called 0 0.1. And now you'll see that when we seed this, When we change this back to 1, each sphere is, has a radius of 0 0.1. And now, when it runs and it collides, it's going to collide. It's not going to go through because it's going to check at this radius for collisions. Fantastic. Oh, okay. So say now we like this and we've got a bunch of balls falling. But say we want random size balls and we don't want to mess around with that. What are we going to do? 